didn't want to move in when she saw that Ann Grossman was in trouble, but she finally did. Won the point. And she's playing her best. She just can't wait to get up to that net to finish the point off. Just a little too hesitant right there for me. But she's won some big points already in this match by flattening her forehand out. When she flattens it out, it's going to hit the court and skid through the court a lot faster. Boy, just a couple of mistakes the last few games by Grossman. Most of those 10 unforced errors coming the last couple of games. That's right. Eight winners for Gabby, only five for Grossman. Most of those on a backhand down the line. She's really surprised Grossman with a few of those. Gabriella Sabatini serving for the first set. She's up a break, up two breaks now against Ann Grossman. Really taken control on the last four games that they've played. She was down 2-1, last 18 of 23 points. with a flatter forehand approach again so that it bites and hits and moves into the court and then finish the point off with the overhead so capable up at the net moves beautifully up there has great feel especially on that backhand volley <laughs> this is the i would guess tracy the first stretch of tennis we've seen from sabatini now where she may start to feel like she's getting it back these last three or four games. Definitely. She looks like she's a little bit more confident. That last serve, 98 miles an hour. Gave it a good pop. Well, that's a dominant finish. Sabatini just steamrolled at the end of the set. 6-2. I'd like to see her get her confidence back. You mentioned the injury, being out for a while, and she's played okay since she's been back. Touched the round of 16 at the Olympics, lost to Celis, lost again to Celis, the Canadian. You mentioned last week, lost to Date in the quarters. Oh. She's probably one of the most popular women on the tour internationally. tennis middle age she's really too young to quit but perhaps not quite capable of ever getting another slam yeah 26 years old actually she was asked about that in a press conference and she said no I'm not thinking of quitting I'm not thinking of retiring I still love the game let's go down to Michael Barkan all right all right, Ted, with Ann Grossman's boyfriend and a world-class athlete in his own right, Olympic swimmer Eric Wunderlich, left Britain. Now, how did the two of you meet? I mean, she was taking, it was like a country club romance, I think, right? She was taking a swim after she had hit a couple, yeah. and, you, and she was in trouble, and you went in and saved her, right? I, I just got off the golf course, more like it. Now, we actually met at uh, the Michigan-Ohio State football game this past November. Oh, no, what were you doing there, and what was she doing? Well, I, I graduated from Michigan in 93, and I was, uh, I still train up there. That's why I trained for the Olympics this year, and... She had never gone to the Michigan Ohio State game in Ann Arbor. She'd been in Columbus, but never up in the big house. And uh, she came up there and watched her boys get it, their uh, tails kicked around the stadium for a while. And we met one night and just kind of hit it off. And went from there. Now, what's the plan? I saw uh, her cheering for you at the Olympic Games. You've been uh, cheering for her as well on the tour? Yeah, lately I've been uh, cruising around and carrying her racket bag and hanging out and giving her support that she needs on the tour. This 
the women's tour is very hard. You know, they travel so much, you know, 30 weeks out of the year. And, uh, it's, it's really hard on him. I mean, I'm just trying to help out and make it as easy as possible for her. What was her... Somebody get him a helmet, please. Boy, it scares me when I watch that. You go running in Central Park these days. It's an obstacle course. In line skaters at about 30 miles an hour. Sabatini serving a 30-15. Gabriella up a break in the second set after winning the first 6-2. Horrible second serve. Just really got away from her. About five feet long over the baseline. The third double fault. Meathead still just doesn't look like she knows what to do on that serve. Sometimes she goes for the big first serve. She had one a couple of games ago, 102 miles an hour. This last serve was 72 miles an hour on the first serve. Mm -hmm. Then she served the second one at 78. So the second one was faster than the first. Really does not make sense mm. to me. Not logical. Can't figure out what she's doing with that serve. Now it's a break point for Grossman. second set. Let's look at Gabriella Sabatini's serve. She needs to be going forward when she finishes the serve off, but she's usually leaning back. She also has to have that toss right up above her, sometimes too far behind her, and she has to lean too far back. decent serve right there. The piece of left foot got inside the court, moving forward. I think the key, Ted, is, is just the toss. You know, she's chasing the toss. You look at Pete Sampras's serve, and it's, it's just the same place every time, that toss. He knows that he can use the exact same motion. A lot of times that comes from nerves. Just not relaxed with that left hand. Sabatini had won five straight games, and she was up 30 love. Suddenly, Ann Grossman now with a little more bounce in her step. I think Sabatini knows when she's playing Ann Grossman that, you know, you've still got to beware, even though you have that string of games. Ann Grossman is such a feisty competitor. I've mentioned it before. Especially here at the Open, seems to do well here trained down in Atlanta while her boyfriend was in the Olympics. She trained with Ken Flack for three weeks. Ken Flack, a tour player. And a little disgusted with herself, Ted, because she set that point very well, but just didn't move into the shot for this volley. Just kind of lunged at it. Not great footwork there. She knew that that was a missed opportunity, and so two break points for